Hi, my name is Flor Delise Perez, and I am an actress. That is primarily my, my thing. <laughs> my first meaningful uh, experience, I was watching Shakespeare Behind Bars. Um, it's a documentary, and it was looking at this group of inmates in this correctional facility in Kentucky, and uh, they were working on The Tempest. And, you know, I had been in Romeo and Juliet, and, and uh, read Macbeth and we had done the work in high school and I and I always loved it um, but until watching that I didn't really realize what a profound impact Shakespeare could have um, and how universal it is you know people usually think oh there's this divide uh, in terms of like socioeconomics of, of who goes to theater who can enjoy Shakespeare who who it's for um, but watching these men working through uh, themes of, of redemption, of forgiveness, of loss, uh, to see them open up and, and share and explore, um, it, it just co completely changed my mind what I thought, who I thought, you know, Shakespeare was. Um, and then actually when I came then to New York uh, after grad school, like I said, um, I found myself working with the public theater and their mobile unit and so if Shakespeare Behind Bars was my first meaningful Shakespeare experience, wa you know, watching, actually performing, um, it, that was exactly the work that, that the mobile unit did. Uh, so we take Shakespeare and we visit prisons, we visit homeless shelters, we visit community centers. And uh, the first piece I was in was Pericles. So I was playing Marina. And, um, and you know, we're working in the room and it's very sparse. We have, you know, it's like really kind of rough and dirty. Our, our director uh, was Rob Melrose. And, um, and we had like a table and several costume pieces and the story and each other and the audience. <laughs> I, I, I really believe that Shakespeare can and does speak to a wide, wide audience. And that's why I love that kind of work that, that takes it out of the theater really and, and brings it to people. I think one of the biggest things is in exploring Shakespeare is, is seeing how, yes, he may have written hundreds of years ago, but these, these themes, you know, the, the humanity um, and the essential quality of the human condition and the human experience, um, it doesn't change. I mean, so much of the language of the words that we use, you know, he invented. <laughs> and so many phrases uh, that we also use, like, our doubts are traitors, um, you know, band of brothers. Um, my mom, when I was growing up, would always tell me if there was, like, a mean girl at school that I was afraid of or, you know, that I didn't want to see at the bus stop or whatever, she would be like, a coward dies a thousand deaths. And I mean, that's Shakespeare. <laughs> so, so he's given me some of the best advice of my life. <laughs> Shakespeare is big. Shakespeare requires size. So in terms of being able to physically fill that size and to stand uh, in a much larger space, I think, than we're used to standing, um, speaking, you know, so your breath, articulation, all of that. Um, also your imagination, you know, Im your imagination as an instrument. Um, needs to be so fully connected and engaged with the the context and the character and um, and I think along with that uh, specificity so you have to be so specific in your language you have to know what you're saying you know and yes we can research uh, what things meant then and you know and, and specific words and language and I said we, mu we must do that um, but we also have to be specific about our own choices. So how is this coming out of me? You know, me as I am now, as a woman, as, you know, looking what I look like in this time. The first folio came to New York and uh, was, was on tour. And I was actually invited to, to come and read To Be or Not To Be um, at the opening ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I had the pleasure of uh, working with Jim Shapiro, who is like the master Shakespeare man um, and several, you know, author of several books, which you should check out if you haven't. Um, 
but we were talking on the phone and you know I started going he's like okay so just speak this to me just read it you know and I started speaking it and he's like okay stop what I'm hearing you try to do is you're doing the the kind of you know this is a 45 year old white man version which is you are not a 45 year old white man so <laughs> so let's get in there and really dig in and uh, see what kind of texture um, your experience your your you know, it coming through your lens of experience um, has. What, what, what can it offer this, this piece? And, uh, and really going through that, I found um, through that specificity, through the language, through the beats, like really working with the text and breaking it apart and bringing myself to it, uh, found uh, just a deep wealth that I really hadn't thought of before. There is something about the climate in which we find ourselves um, in this nation and in the world, um, but especially in this nation in the past couple of weeks uh, in terms of the conversations and the grief and the, um, the, the kind of outpouring of, um, of rage, of anger about uh, kind of relations between um, justice and law enforcement and, uh, and life, innocent life. Um, and, and that's been swirling in, in my head. So you must be the first that gives this sentence and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. Could great men thunder as Jove himself does? Jove would never be quiet, for every pelting petty officer would use his heaven for thunder, nothing but thunder. Most merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulfurous bolt splits the unwedgeable and gnarled oak than the soft myrtle. But man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured. His glassy essence, like an angry ape, plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as makes the angels weep who, with our spleens, would all themselves laugh mortal. We cannot weigh our brother with ourself. Great men may jest at saints, tis wit in them, but in the less foul profanation. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Why do I put these sayings upon you? Because authority, Though it err like others, has in itself a kind of medicine that skins the vice of the top. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that is like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon thy tongue against my brother's life. Mm -hmm.